personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance calculation tools, part number three, college savings calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet, which we have been doing in prior presentations. So you can go back and take a look at them if you so choose, but you're not required to. We could go from this point forward. If you do have access to it, there's three tabs down below, example, practice, and blank. Example tab, in essence, being an answer key. We've got the information on the left-hand side, calculations on the right, focusing in on types of calculations that hopefully we can put together and understand to customize our own life insurance calculation needs. The second tab being the practice tab has some pre-formatted cells to help you work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, a blank tab, where we've been putting the calculations in place doing the Excel formatting. So recap of what we've seen in prior presentations, usually when we're thinking about how much life insurance we need, the starting point is to think, who is dependent upon me? If I was to die, how much would they need per year, given the fact that my earnings are no longer there? For how many years would they need that cash flow? And then try to figure out what lump sum at the point of death would be necessary to basically provide for those needs. Multiple ways you can do that. You could start with your wages, for example, or you could start with your expenses, try to add up what the expense needs are. Once you have kind of the cash flow needs, you might use a generic, say 10 years, for example, seven years or something like that, or you might try to determine what your life earnings expectancy would be, or possibly the earning, the life or the time frame for which your youngest child would reach 18, for example, or possibly your li your spouse's uh, working career in terms of how many years they would need. Now, notice you might first go into, say, something like retirement or something like that, or until your child reaches 18, and then say, but yeah, but what about retirement after that? What about college savings or something like that? Well, once we get that cash flow per year calculated, we can tack on, which we'll do this time, added things which are goal-oriented, target-oriented items, such as a retirement, such as saving for a parent that might need you know, medical needs if later on in life, such as saving for college. So then we came out to the insurance needed at the 10 years. We might then discount that at like a 70%, for example, because if we're starting with wages, we might say one, I'm not there. And two, you might be able to save some of this money. And therefore, in order to get the same cash flow, you could invest it and it might be something less that be a heuristic kind of way to calculate it. You might try to calculate the cash flow to determine how much life insurance you could have to get the cash flow you would like, 60,000, here just from the investment, which would of course would be a lot higher life insurance. Or you could say, let me do an annuity calculation to try to figure out how much uh, cash flow would be necessary given the fact or assuming they can invest the lump sum they got at death at 5%. And then we can get a more possibly reasonable calculation. We also might take into consideration uh, inflation within that calculation as well. So we can make it a little bit more complex using that. We can also use this as we saw in prior presentations to think about decreasing, for example, the balance of the life insurance and think about possibly having a maybe a term life insurance that goes down in value as we get closer to that end goal where the cash flow might not be as necessary at the end of our working career or at the point where the child reaches 18 or something like that, and then tack on the other goal oriented items like retirement savings and college, for example, which is where we stand now. So now let's go back on over here. We're going to do this. We're going to think about, okay, now that I've thought about that component, what if I've got a kid that I would like to support uh, through college? So how can I basically tack on to my prior life insurance calculations, something like a savings for college, or you could do a similar thing for retirement for your spouse or for an elderly uh, parent that you think might have a needs uh, later on in, in life, medical needs or something like that. Similar calculations for all those. We don't need the yearly cash flows at the point of death. You need the cash flows after that point in time to, to goal-oriented kind of targets, which is a little bit different calculation, which we can tack on to what we did in terms of the cash flow needs from a day-to-day -day perspective. Okay, so let's think about college. We're going to say, okay, let's make a skinny column. 
I'm going to take this skinny column, go to the, go to home tab and say we got the format painter. I'm going to make AL skinny, skinny AL. And then we're going to say college, cost of college. Let's say cost of college. All right, so the way to do this is similar kind of thing. If we're saving for college, we want to think about what is going to be the targeted future value cost of the college that we're going to need. And I'm just going to plan it at the point in time that we start college. So maybe they're going to be in it for four years. At the beginning of that four years, how much would they need in future value money in order to pay for college at that point in time? You can get a little bit more detailed and say, well, what if you had earnings over the four years? But we'll just say target goal at the time they start college. I want to have this money ready to roll. So I'm going to widen the cell a little bit larger. So and I'm going to make some header calculations. So we'll select these three cells, home tab, font group. Let's make this black and white and then let's say okay well, let's first think about what the current cost of college is current college cost so that's something we can kind of nail down hopefully and say okay it depends where you go but let's just say that the current cost we're going to just assume and this may not be completely accurate but we're going to you know you could do your own research on the current cost i'm going to say it's forty thousand. so then i'm going to say the years the years until we need the money years until college years until college well, let's say that we're going to start college start at age 18 i'm just going to say they're going to start college at 18 let's say or 19 or something 20 i don't know so we'll say you're going to the city college for two years you're going and that's the way and you know whatever your plan is and then we're going to say the kids age current kids age is going to be i think i said it equals to we're saying they're five right now we'll say they're five so we got a college fund for you kids you better you best get to studying i'm going to go to the home tab font group and underline it subtracting this out so this is years until well let's just copy this one up here years until college we'll copy that here double click on it i'm going to go to the end of it remove the colon so that means they're going to have to, how many years? 18 minus 5, right? 18 minus 5. So 13 years. They got 13 years. By, by that point, we need the money for them to, to, get, to get into college and whatnot, assuming that, you know, they're able to or whatever. But even so, they can, they're going, right? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care, man. Anyway, this is going to be, I don't really care. I'm just kidding. So you don't have to go to college if you don't want future value cost of college. So then I'm going to figure out the future value cost of college because I'm going to say that there's inflation involved. So I said inflation's 3%. So if inflation's involved, and let's put that down, let's put that down here. Let's say this equals, so I could see everything in the same spot. My inflation calculation, this equals the inflation of the 3%. We'll go to the home tab, numbers, percentify it. I'm going to select these two. We'll make that border and blue. Okay, so, well, hold on a sec. That's not blue. Let's make that, this one needs to be blue, not black. Okay, so then let's put an underline here, font group and underline. So I'm going to do I'm going to do a calculation which is going to be the future value calculation. How much money will we need in future value terms if there's 3% inflation over 13 years until the point we need the money. So okay. So I'm going to say this is going to be negative future value. That's how I do it typically instead of equals brackets. The rate is going to be that 3% comma number of periods is going to be that 13 years comma and then we're going to say the not a payment because this is not an annuity so comma the present value because it's just one that we're looking at future value of one is the forty thousand and brackets and enter so we need 58 741 at the end of 13 years in future value terms so okay so now we got to think okay well let's make this let's make this blue and bordered so let's assume that we earn, we have earnings of 5%. So I'm going to say if I have 5% earnings, if I was to have earnings, if I can put my tuition, my college fund somewhere and earn a rate of return 
of 5%, 5%, and we're going to say okay let's make this let's make this a percent percentifying it and we'll put some blue borders here blue and borders so then how much would we would we have to put away in order to get in order to get to that future value of 57 uh 58741 let's select this item here let's make a skinny ap i'm going to hit the paint brushy skinny ap and then i'm going to say years and then insurance insurance years and then insurance and so i'm going to try to calculate this on a year by year basis because the closer we get to that 13 year time frame then the more we're going to have to we're going to have to have in the life insurance right because because now we're not going to have time for it to accumulate so it will depend upon when we die which again you know, we could get a little bit more precise possibly in terms of our life insurance over time so let's first calculate it on a year by year we'll talk about that in a second i'm going to go to the font group make this bucket uh, black and white let's center this now let's make the years a little bit skinnier and then i'm going to say from zero one two and select those three i'm going to take it down 13 years this time 13 years take it down break it down 13 years center it okay so that would mean so if <clears throat> what would i what would i need to be putting in place to reach to reach this 58741 that would be a present value calculation meaning how much would i have to put in at year 0 if i had 13 years to get up to that 58741 so I'm going to say, okay, let's, this is going to be negative present value brackets. The rate is going to be, I'm going to say, I'm going to earn on it 5%, earning on it 5%, comma. And then the number of periods is going to be, I'm going to say a little bit tricky here, 13, but I'm going to say minus zero. I want to say minus zero because I want to be able to copy that down. When I copy it down, I don't want the 13 to move. I do want the, the zero to move. So that 13, which is an AQ 15, I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the AQ and the 15. So then comma, the, the payment is going to be, the payment calculation is going to be, no, I'm, I don't have a payment because it's not an annuity comma. Again, we're looking at the future value which is gonna be that 58,741. That's where we wanna to get to in the future. I want that to stay the same when I copy it down. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard. This first one also is outside. That's that 5%. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard for that one too, and then enter. So there, there we have it. So if I took that 31,152, and I put it in place earnings on it, the earnings on it after the 13 years would give me that future value of the 58,741, which is what I would need counting inflation to get to. If I copy that down, double clicking on the fill handle, then that means obviously as I get closer to, to, the, to the time when they actually need the college funds, I'm gonna need more because I don't have as much time for it to grow. So therefore, as I get closer here, then I'm gonna need more money in it. And, and at year 13, I got the full 58,741. Now, again, we can kind of compare this. Notice over here where we said, when I looked at my needs in terms of my working years, uh, what the cash flow needs are, we said it actually went down as I re reached my target, whatever that be, be that my working years years until my spouse is retired, years until the kid is 18 or whatever, those are going down because obviously there's gonna be less of those years as time passes. This one, the targeted goals are going up. So if I wanted to combine these together to try to think about what the life insurance, if I want a decreasing life insurance, I can combine these together, which we'll do in a future presentation to say, say I need this life insurance plus this at year zero, right? This and this at, at year one, for example, to try to get a more nuanced calculation of what the actual needs might be and try to think about what a tapering might be if I wanted the life insurance policy to kind of taper off as time passes. Okay, let's make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered. So I'm gonna say font group, make that border blue. 
And just to understand it a little bit more, let's just take this first one and say, okay, how does that, how does that work? If I had the 31, 152, would that really grow to be 58, 741 at the end of 13 years? Let's test it. I'm going to put my cursor on uh, this column, whatever that is. I can't really see it. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to the home tab uh, format painter. Let's make the AS as a skinny as skinny as. So then I'm going to say this is going to be years. We'll say earnings. And then I'm going to say the balance years earnings and then the balance let's make this our headers so i'm going to select those three home tab font group let's make that black and white alignment let's center it let's make the at a little bit smaller at it's a little bit it's only at you need two letters to make it smaller and then zero one two let's select those three copy that down to the 13 years 13 years let's center that centering that Okay, so we're going to start off and say, does this really work? If I started at period zero at the 31,152 and I earned 5% per period, that's an average, of course. We don't know what's actually going to happen in the future. We might earn less, we might earn more, but 5%, fairly decent number, fairly conservative kind of number that we could use. We could have losses, right? We don't really know, but we're going to sit, we're, that's what we're going to use as our average. So we're going to say this is going to be the 31,152 times. We're going to pick up that 5%. I want that to stay the same when I copy it down. In other words, I don't want that cell to move down. Therefore, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the N and the 10 and enter. Then the balance is going to be equal to the prior balance plus the earnings and enter. So if I select those two and just click the fill handle, fill handle button. So you can see how it grows each year. The earnings are going up because we have more accumulation of the earnings and we get to that 58, uh, 741 at the end, just to kind of prove that we could do the same thing for each, you know, for each year, for example, and try to try to see that calculation, but that's just to give us an idea to prove that concept. So let's make this blue and bordered. Let's go ahead and make that blue and bordered, bordered and blue. So we can do a similar calculation, like I say, any kind of targeted goal. So if you're if we're thinking first, we thought about what the what the cash flow needs in terms of expenses for our working years or wh however many years they think that cash flow is needed. Then after the working years, you might think about, OK, what are the retirement goals? Are, are you should you be saving putting something away possibly for retirement goals where you can use a similar kind of of, uh, of uh, goal-based calculation, for example. And, and you might be doing the same for a college. So we got a goal-based kind of calculation. Or you might say, I want to save to have enough money put away for the needs of an elderly parent or something, medical needs or something like that, which would be a goal-based calculation, which we can add on to. So now we've got this of the cash flow needs, and then we can kind of add on our goal-based calculations. And, and you can see how we could do this on a lump sum method and try to estimate an idea of what we need, or we could think about we would still, if we added these together, most likely have a declining need for our our life insurance over time because we would have less working years if we were to be living. So we could then subtract them out and say, well, what kind of insurance maybe that decreases over time, for example. The, the next way you might look at it is you might, of course, take into consideration your balance sheet and how much do you, do you have more liabilities, a lot of liabilities, or obviously later on you might have net assets. You might have assets involved and think about the liquid assets versus the non-liquid assets like the house, for example. And we also might be thinking from the liability side of things, the big liability being the mortgage. So we might try to think about it. How could I do my life insurance possibly tied into the mortgage balance uh, to some degree so that we can we can we can take that take that method that we might use for life insurance that's what we'll talk about next time